Hey guys, stick to the end of the video. You know how this works. Okay, today I'm going to answer half of a question that I always get, like all the time, recently, maybe, I don't know. It's one of the biggest questions you had about characters, and that question is, how do you write romance and relationships? So today I'm going to deal with the first aspect of that, and that is chemistry. Chemistry isn't just for romance. Um, it speaks to all types of character relationships. It can be nefarious evil relationships, and it can be sweet friendship, romance, and otherwise. It just, it speaks to anything that is a relationship between two characters, I guess, or more. <laughs> the, the point is that when characters click, that is chemistry. It's a spark, it's like an energy, but that kind of makes it difficult to explain since it's kind of very organic, as is a lot of character stuff for me. So I decided to dissect it, di dissect chemistry, and figure out like what's going on there. And one of the most important things I've realized about creating two characters meant to interact in a meaningful way is to balance contrast and similarities. The similarities um, typically are shared in the theme of the two characters, while the contrast is shown in attitude. The relationship then forms around kind of the reconciliation of this contrast, or the inability to reconcile said contrast. Okay, Bones, um, what, what, what does all that even mean? Still kind of nebulous. Um, it means that when you're pairing characters together, pay attention to their themes. Theme, I've talked about this a while back, but it is shown in the character's conflict. It's the answer the character needs in order to achieve a resolution of their conflict. It is the need part, okay? Uh, that's typically where you'll find the theme. I find that there, the closer a relationship there is between the character's themes, the more intense of, an, of a relationship that forms. If two characters struggle with the same fundamental question, then there's like an inherent interest that they'll have in one another's struggles, or if not an interest, a, a, an inherent dislike. There, there's going to be something there, is basically all there is to it. How that plays out very much depends on personality. Um, but yeah, like I said, this chemistry that's there, it doesn't inform the type of relationship they'll have. The type of relationship kind of occurs in the contrast aspect, because um, while these characters will tackle the same themes, they tackle them as individuals. And how they deal with the differences is what determines their relationships, and a lot of that comes down to like plot. And I'll talk more about relationships later and sort of how this plot aspect happens in another video, but I I'm not going to leave immediately now and talk about these characters that are being drawn here. I want to briefly mention side characters and background characters because you might be like, well, how do you show contrast in characters that don't really have like big themes? And yeah, t to tackle that, you have to achieve kind of an illusion of the same chemistry, an implication that it is there. And you kind of, again, you need to just remember that there's contrast and similarity. It's very easy to forget about contrast um, since relationships give off the sense of synchronize syn synchronization where, you kind, where they kind of become one unit. And that's true in a way, but... The synchronicity comes from how, how they navigate the differences between one another and how they compensate for it and use its strengths. So make sure to showcase that contrast, that they are individuals that are able to work together, and the ease of how they are able to work together and synchronize and navigate their contrast, the ease at which they do it will really showcase the strength of their relationship, like early relationships. They, they might have a lot more um, uh, bickering, more... Not even bickering, because, like, uh, bickering can be a part of, like, that synchronized part where the bickering is very synchronized. But you, you know kind of what I mean, I hope. That, that a weaker relationship will have more difficulty navigating the contrast than a stronger, more um, cemented relationship. Either way, there's still contrast. It's never going to disappear entirely. And that's kind of the fun part and what makes chemistry so fun. Okay, so that's all I have to say 
on that matter today. I hope that was informative. So characters, these two characters are Snake Mom and Goat Dad, and they are from the College Kids Alien RP, which was mentioned in an earlier video with a with Daff and Brad. Um, I guess right now I should probably link to that video so like we can get the full breadth of the story here. Um, but basically it's like um, college kids from space come to Earth and are studying Earth culture. And one of the kids that comes down to Earth, his name is Toby, he'll be talked about later. Uh, I have a whole thing on Toby, but he's a little human. Um, he's a little human from outer space. He's a wizard, and he's studying on Earth. And these two lovely people are his parents, because he was adopted. Uh, they adopted a human. They didn't really know how to raise a human at all, because they were very not human themselves. But they tried their best. And, you know, they had to adopt because they're different species entirely, but they love each other. I, I guess, like, I guess their similarity is that they, they love Toby and they, um, they, they like their jobs and they, they're, they're both strong, independent, but also like, well, both of them, okay, you know what? I think I know the theme between these two. Uh, th these two, they come from like, very intense um, job backgrounds. So Goat Dad. Um, Goat Dad is a wizard and he worked in the Wizard Council and the Wizard Council basically owns like it is in charge of the space government. So Goat Dad was in that and it was very intense and it has a lot of problems. Uh, we'll get into those. Uh, and Snake Mom, she was a warrior from five. So five is like the planet that Daff came from, but she's like more equipped for it because she's a giant snake lady with a venom bite. And she was a champion of the ring. She she used to fight in what were called like the beast wars. And it's basically like like the different fights that occur at the arena um, on five uh, they break, break down into diff different categories, and Beast Wars is where you fight, like, giant, like, animals and horrible, almost mythical creatures the best that you can, whereas, like, there's other fights where it's, like, between two h high intelligence species that both entered the ring. Yeah, so she fought in the Beast Wars, she was a champion of that, and she now kind of works- she uses, like, her championship to now, like, have, like, a more settled job in the the higher aspects of the ring. Like, she now works as someone who catches animals and things to bring to the new beast matches. Like, she's, she's basically, like, a producer-type role and also, like, a hands-on type role. Like, she works behind the scenes in the ring now. And so, yeah, both of them have very intense jobs and they are both very rich and they live on the planet one and one is the very first planet and it is so densely packed that it's basically all apartments the whole thing it's very expensive to live there because it's kind of like um wh what is it i i don't know it's like a big metropolis metropolis type area where it's like it's kind of like the place to live but it costs so much money like they live in basically a two bedroom apartment that's like only like like maybe three or four rooms like <laughs> and very squished very cramped but it costs an insane amount of money and you know that's their life they spend most of their time off at work anyways but yeah um I guess I should mention why they're called snake mom and goat dad and it's just because like they're from such different different cultures that like um the human tongue cannot pronounce either of their names properly so toby just calls it calls um calls the mom and dad but like when talking to his friends he calls them like snake mom and goat dad because one's very goatish and the other is very snakeish and so toby's dad he was working at the wizard council and 
He eventually was thrown in prison for, I, I forget what they say the reason is, but the real reason is he's getting too close to like the answers of like all the messed up crap they're up to. And so he gets thrown in jail for most of Toby's life, honestly. And he's only recently come back. And like, there's this like prison planet he was sent to where all like evil wizards go. It's basically space Azkaban. And so, like, he comes back, and when he does, he doesn't look very g- goatish anymore. He looks very human. I guess he's like, Ed- like, he can't remember anything, and he acts like a a goat a bunch. Like, he acts like a goat, and he looks like a human. And what happened was that, like, um, he spent some time as as a goat, and then they like uncursed him and did a really bad job of it so instead of looking like a goat he thinks like a goat it sucks he doesn't like it he's not a fan um he doesn't remember much and uh, snake mom is very upset about this and she's been taking care of him um because he he needs like a lot of help to take care of himself now toby's sad because he never really got to be friends with his dad after he went away to prison forever. And yeah, it's it's not a good time. And Snake Mom, um, in the meantime, like she eventually kind of just she gets fed up with having to take care of him all the time. Because she's kind of from five, she's a bit cold about things and she just it's too much stress to deal with and she doesn't like thinking about all that's gone on I guess and she kind of feels like he's gone at this point so she is just like Toby I need you to look after your dad because I can't do this I need to go back to work and she's gonna go she goes off to work on the new the new Beast Wars season And so, yeah, that's what she goes off to do. She is off hunting down dragons to bring to the ring. Meanwhile, Toby is left with his dad, who keeps, like, eating his furniture and stuff, because he is a a goat man, and at least he looks human, so he can stay on Earth. Yeah, that's that. Um, Eventually, they are able to cure his dad. Oh, right. His dad has, like, a latent ability and, like, um, because, cause, yeah, all the wizards have their own, like, latent special abilities. And his, like, special ability is that he gets premonitions and that's what got him into trouble is he had some premonitions about what was going on and what the council is up to, which we will get into. When I finally describe Toby, we will get into what is up with the wizard council. But yeah, he has these premonitions, and that's why he is put away. And eventually, they are able to, like, uncloud his mind and get him back to, like, normal. And then he is able to help, like, guide the team out into space to figure out what's going on. He ends up at- he ends up on five at some point because he's looking for his wife. He also just kind of gets sent there. I forget. He gets sent there when- for some reason or other. Because they're kind of like, ah, just get rid of him. He's trouble, that one. And, like, the space counselor finds him, and she's like, who are you? And then she starts, because the space counselor is in on, like, figuring things out, she's like, oh, no. Oh, no, there's bad stuff. You know about, like, bad things that are going down. And um, she brings him around, I think. Yeah, it's a big thing. I really like Snake Mom. She's a nice mom. She's really tough, but she's also really sweet. She's, like, um, she's really, like, calmed down as a person since, like, leaving the the beast fighting ring and raising a kid. She no longer really wants to fight anymore because she's like, I, Toby would really be really sad if I died. Who cares if I get more honor? I'm already, like, super honorable as beast catching lady. But, like, sometimes she has trouble with, like, being empathetic to situations. She's learning and we're all proud of her for that. We're all super proud of Snake Mom. Be proud of Snake Mom. Give her give her a little high five. Give everyone a high five. Give Goat Dad a high five. Let him eat grass. He still eats grass. Like even when he's even when he's cured, he eats grass because he's a goat. That's what goats do. He's a vegetarian. He's a vegetarian. Toby's mom eats nothing but meat. Toby Toby likes likes his mom's food way better than his dad's food. They eat like gross alien food. She likes 
she likes whole prey. Unhinge her jaw, eat a whole prey. Meanwhile, Toby's like, mm, I'll just eat food from five that you grow up on, like like bugs, wriggly bugs. Toby is like, what is what is fruit? I've never seen fruit before. My family doesn't eat fruit. Anyways, now I'm talking about Toby, and that's a whole other video. Thank you for watching. Um, like, comment, and subscribe for more more fun. I can't believe we're like we almost got like a thousand new subs this week. Like, if we hit six k by the end of Saturday, I think that's like a thousand in a week. That is crazy. Where are you guys coming from? Get out. But also stay in. Like it's fine. You can you can stay. You can watch videos if you want. But dang, where are you? <laughs> where where? <laughs> what portal has opened and l allowed you all through? Also, oh right, um, Moonlight Moonlight Anthology. I forgot to keep promoting this. You you've got like a month and a half to get your short stories or your comic pictures pitches ready. I hope to see you in my submissions, and I hope to make beautiful werewolves with you <laughs> okay that's enough rambling goodbye i gotta go edit this i totally i'm not doing this last minute like usual at all no don't don't even judge me okay please stop just 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 stop <laughs> don't judge <laughs>